how to make blood less thick with just two products that you can definitely find in your kitchen. Watch this video till the end to know it. Thick blood is a risk for the heart and blood vessels. It runs more slowly through the vessels, which means that organs and tissues are supplied with oxygen wars, and the heart pumps a denser liquid and makes much more effort. Thick blood can lead to another deadly state, thrombosis. In addition to blood thinning drugs, there are also some products that thin the blood too. Imagine, you drink a beverage through a straw. If the beverage is thick like a milkshake, it would be difficult to suck it in with a very thin straw. The same thing happens with thin capillaries and thick blood. It's very hard to push dense liquid through capillaries with small diameter. And it's the heart that does this work. Blood must be in different states depending on the case. In vessels, it should be liquid to flow freely, but as soon as the vessel is damaged and blood leaks away, it should become solid to clog the wound. There are many substances in the blood that regulate blood clotting. Some hereditary blood diseases may disrupt their function. But for most people with thick blood, the problems are not in genes or specific blood factors, but in much simpler things that we can easily Influence. Blood is a liquid medium in which blood cells float. Red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. It reminds me of soup where there is broth and pieces of vegetables and meat. The less broth, the thicker the soup, right? Broth like plasma consists almost entirely of water. That is little water, thick soup. Or in our case, thick blood. And here we come to the first product necessary for thinning the blood, with cheese in your kitchen. And this is water. Studies have shown that for most people under normal conditions, 1.2-1.5 liters of water per day is enough. It is especially necessary to monitor how much you drink in the heat or during a flu. All that mucus that comes out of us at such moments has taken water from the blood and the blood has become thicker. Just know this. But many of you say, yes, I drink water and only go to the toilet all the time and have a face puffiness in the morning, but my blood is still thick and nothing helps. And you are absolutely right. If you simply increase the amount of water, it will pass through your body in transit and the kidneys will be just more busy for a while. Water consists of fairly small molecules and it freely passes from the vessels into the tissues, where it causes swelling. From the kidney vessels, water goes into the urine, which causes frequent trips to the toilet. The fact is that the ratio of water and salts, proteins, sugars and other substances in the blood plasma should always be the same. This is extremely important to the normal functioning of blood cells. If there is too much water in the blood plasma, the red blood cells will swell and will not be able to carry oxygen in this form. Moreover, they will not fit into small capillaries and may even burst. If you simply add more water into the blood, you disturb the balance and the body does not like it. It very quickly restores the balance with the help of the kidneys. Some of the excess water goes into the tissues and you get a puffy face in the morning or swollen legs by the evening. By the way, face puffiness and thick blood are often connected. Let's find out how to solve these two problems by only one product. To be honest, with the information from my channel, you can solve a lot of problems with your health. Subscribe to the channel if you want to know yourself better. The first thing that comes to mind is to add some salt to avoid upsetting the electrolyte balance. This is how electrolytes Port drinks work. If you replace the water with water and some lemon juice and a pinch of salt and sugar, then it will not leave your body so quickly with the cheerful gurgling of the toilet. But thus we will consume too much salt and too much sugar, which is not very healthy. And it will not solve the problem for a long time. Salts and sugars are small molecules too. Their excess will go into the tissues and increase swelling there. You know that. If you eat a jar of pickles at night, 
in the morning your face will tend to be the shape of the jar. The kidneys will also get rid of excess salt. Water will go away with salt into the urine too, because we cannot excrete like dry salt crystals, you know. Both water and salt have a minus. They very quickly escape from the vessel because they are small molecules. But if the molecule was large enough and could not escape from the blood, this would force the water to remain in the blood because water is attracted to substances that it can dissolve. It really likes to dissolve something. So the substance must be large and soluble in water. What molecules do we have that are large enough? Fat is not suitable, it does not dissolve in water. Sugar is not suitable too because glucose is quite small and is strictly monitored by insulin. All that remains is protein and this is your second component. I'm sure in your kitchen there is at least one high protein product. Look there at the back wall of the fridge. But how does it work, you say? Logically protein is something thick and blood should only become thicker. This would be the case if the vessel were an impermeable pipe. But the wall of the vessel is more like a colander. Imagine that you have small metal nuts in the colander. Not a very common situation in life, but anyway. Nuts easily fall out through the holes and soon there is nothing left in the colander. Water also easily leaves the vessel through the pores. But if you add a few small magnets to the colander, they will magnetize the nuts. And if they are stuck together, they will no longer be able to fall through the holes. Proteins do the same thing. They magnetize and attract water molecules and it remains in the vessel, making the blood more liquid. Protein is too big to escape itself through the pores, so it stays in the blood vessel and all water molecules around it stay too. This is what we need. Of course, protein that you eat will not go directly to the blood. It will be broken down to amino acids in the digestive system and the body will create new proteins from these amino acids, including blood proteins too. So, how much protein do you need to make your blood thinner and make you healthy, happy and forever young? Normally, we need to eat 1 gram of protein per 1 kilo of our weight daily. Elderly people or those with kidney problems need 0.5-0.8 gram per kilo. Illness, stress or heavy physical activity increase the need of protein. For a flu alone, there are so many proteins that the immune system produces because antibodies, inflammation substances, mucin in mucus. Guess what they are? Of course, proteins. Most of us don't eat enough protein, even if we don't cut out meat. The Western diet is rich with fats and carbohydrates, but not proteins at all. For example, I weigh 60 kilos and I need to eat 60 grams of protein per day. Let's count. It's 10 chicken eggs or 200 grams of chicken or 300 grams of salmon. I don't eat that much. But you say cereals, grains and dairy products also contain some protein. Yes, but to gain, for example, 60 grams uh, of protein, I need to eat 350 grams of pasta or 700 grams of beans or 2.5 liters of milk. And in most vegetables, fruits, bread, sweets, soup, in what we mainly eat, there are very tiny amounts of protein. I can gain a maximum of 20-30 grams per day. I don't say about sweets, snacks and all this ultra-processed food. To estimate your protein intake, you can use one of the calorie counting apps. They usually show how much protein, fat and sugar you ate. You can try to record your diet for let's say, a week or two. The main thing is to weigh all the food, not just estimate it by eye. And don't forget to record all the snacks too. The result for the week will let you understand how much protein you eat. Most likely you will be surprised by these numbers and ask yourself, oh my god, how my body is still trying to walk. Not everyone will be comfortable eating so much protein per day. For example, I don't like eggs, beans and meat so much to eat them in such quantities. In addition, proteins are almost always mixed 
with fats in products. And by increasing the consumption of, for example, eggs, you will also increase the amount of fat and cholesterol in your diet. For myself, I choose another option. It's whey protein. I have been consuming it for the past three years, I think. Surely you have not even thought that such protein can be useful not only for bodybuilders, but also for, let's say, an elderly lady who wants to improve her health, or for an overweight person who is on a diet and wants to lose some weight. Of course, I do not drink endless protein shakes, and I do not consume the whey protein in the amount needed to gain muscles. I only add a little bit to food, to my oatmeal or yogurt, to comfortably get the daily protein intake. It's approximately plus 10-20 grams per day only. I only feel this protein lack in my diet. Let me remind you again, drinking protein shakes is not necessary. You can get it totally from food. This is just one option to provide yourself with protein in case you haven't thought about it. People pay a lot of attention to micro elements of nutrition and so little to macro elements which form the basis of our body. The main nutrients are proteins, fats and carbohydrates. They affect our body much more strongly than, let's say, chromium, vitamin B6 or goji berries. First of all, we need to correct their consumption because a large number of diseases are associated with an unbalanced amount of exactly them. And thick blood is one of such a problem. Of course, people also suffer from a lack of vitamins, but vitamin and microelements deficiencies are much less common than diabetes, insulin resistance, high cholesterol, obesity, high blood pressure, and bowel and liver diseases. Proteins, fats, and carbohydrates are the three main elements of which our body is built. First, we need to understand this foundation and then take care of the small details. Without sufficient protein intake, all vitamins, medicines and microelements will not even enter the blood because proteins also carry them into the blood. Calculate how much protein you consume and if you lack it, be sure to add it in any suitable way. The effect will be more powerful than many supplements and even medicines. The blood will become less thick. The heart will walk easily. Swelling will disappear. And even more, blood pressure and cholesterol will decrease. Cravings for sweets and sugar will decrease. I won't even mention your better than ever hair and nails. You will see the effect yourself. Just try it. Just one change and how much benefit. I'm Dr. Lana, I'm physiologist and neurobiologist, and here I teach you physiology and medicine that you can easily use in your daily life to be healthier and happier. Subscribe to my channel to know yourself better. Now you know how to solve the problem of thick blood. Start with water and protein. Try it. Track the effect. Leave a comment and become healthier. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.